South of Gloucester, the risk of flooding decreases rapidly because the river starts to widen and it quickly develops into an estuary. It's one of the biggest estuaries in the UK. At this point, it's already two kilometres wide and south of the narrow point where they built the bridge, it's even wider still. The river here is tidal and has the second largest tidal range in the world. The difference between the high water mark and the low water mark can be as much as 15 metres. And when the tide is out, huge expanses of mud flats are revealed. Many rivers in the UK, like the Thames, the Humber and the Forth, end in a wide estuary and they all present the same problem. You need a long bridge to get from one side to the other. Here on the Severn, there isn't just one bridge but two that carry traffic between England and Wales. South of the crossings, the river becomes much deeper, which means ships can come in. This has attracted industry to the cheap land around the estuary and the shoreline is chock-a-block with factories and dock facilities. I'm just surrounded by industry. There's a smelting works over there, several chemical plants over there, an LPG and oil terminal down there, and just over here is a container terminal for import and export to all over the world. Half a million cars pass through the port each year and the £27 million refit of the neighbouring Port Berry docks should ensure that traffic through the area continues to grow. By the time it reaches its mouth, the Severn is 13 kilometres wide. The river looks like the sea. Having started as a trickle in the Plinlimmon Hills, it's run 350 kilometres. And by the time it reaches the sea, it carries over 9 billion litres a day. Quite a transformation.